in chapter nine, so two lectures ago, we were discussing the biasing of circuits, the biasing of uh, operational amplifier circuits. And we found that we could make biasing errors because of um, biased currents flowing through resistors, etc. If those biasing errors are too large, we can use so-called error reduction techniques to improve it. So one is compensation of reproducible errors. So compensation basically is a technique in which we reproduce an error, add it in an inverted, subtracted, you could say, from the original signal, and then we have compensated for the error. So um, we can do that. We can, error, we can compensate for known errors caused by biased currents of operational amplifiers. If we know how large the bias current is, we can maybe find means to compensate for, this uh, for these errors because they are reproducible. Um, there's another technique that is negative feedback. Negative feedback we already applied in the amplifier. We have seen that the amplifier that we built this in chapter nine. You can take the, the material with you if you next to it if you want. We have um, seen that we needed to make a microphone preamplifier and that the frequency range of interest did not include DC. So since temperature variations are very low frequency, have very low frequency components, and our signal frequency components are much. Uh, higher, we can say, okay, we can separate AC and DC, and that is what we already did in the amplifier. But therefore, we can also say we can apply negative feedback for biasing, and uh, separately from the negative feedback, so the negative feedback for very low frequency, and another negative frequency, uh, negative feedback for frequency range of interest, which is basically the amplifier that we designed already. So, if the frequency range of the temperature changes differs from the signal frequency range, we can do those kind of things. Another technique that is often used is auto zero. There are a few types of auto zero. You can say, well, um, uh, one type is, let's say, if you are having a signal that is not of interest during some period, you can say, okay, during that period, I'm going to reset my amplifier compensate for biasing errors, and maybe the change over the time that the signal is of interest is very small. That's one technique. Another technique is using two amplifiers, one, and uh, switching between them. So while one is processing the signal, the other is calibrating its offsets and its biasing errors. And then after it is calibrated, you switch back, etc. That is done in modern operational amplifiers, auto zero amplifiers. So that is basically the technique that we are then using. So two amplifiers. And the last one that is also called, uh, usually called nowadays uh, auto zero amplifiers, but basically it's another technique, which you say before I'm going to amplify my signal, I bring it to a frequency range that differs from there where my noise is and noise is then temperature changes. So if you want to make an amplifier for very low frequencies and it, the temperature variations, let's say, cannot be distinguished from your signal variations, then you first bring your signal to another frequency range. There you amplify and then you bring it back to your original signal frequency range when it is amplified and much larger and the temperature changes are not so relevant anymore. So that is basically what you have for techniques, but we will not discuss them all here. We will just discuss negative feedback biasing. So that is here. You see in the figure um, our uh, amplifier, uh, our amplifier with a, a negative feedback, R2 and R3, the source R1, uh, AC coupling with C1, and, the, uh, and C2 also for AC coupling. And now still it can be that you say, I want to provide this bias current and I want really to have the output at some reference voltage. And now you see what we are doing at the output. We are measuring the uh, let's see with the mouse. At the output, we are measuring the output voltage. We are then integrating, which means low pass action, 
the difference with respect to what we want to have. So we put an integrator there and provide a current to the input so that the output, so basically this is your controller, G1 is a bias controller, another negative feedback thing, and we are controlling the node, uh, we are putting the current in node number three so that the output voltage will be exactly equal to the reference voltage. Of course, this loop must have an integrator, otherwise you have uh, feedback, you have uh, parallel feedback for your signal frequencies and that is not what you want. You only want to have this for bias frequencies, uh, bias changes, so for temperature changes. And in this way, of course, you need to calculate this GB, this uh, gain of this source, so that it, the frequency range of interest is exactly what you want to have. So we have voltage sensing here of exactly, you exactly the same. We want to fix the DC output voltage. So we sense the DC output voltage. We compare it with the reference, integrate the error and have a feedback mechanism here so that we control the amplifier. Here you see the implementation with a integrator with an op-amp. So basically this is the uh, com a complete circuit. And um, I did not yet put the, the there's in the book, there is a, a model up script uh, for SlyCap. I will change this into a Python script. I did not do it yet. So then I will publish the Python script and you will uh, be able to study the behavior and produce the graphs as they have shown in the book. Of course, here the offsets of this operational amplifier now is the new error with respect to the reference. So, but now we have two separated functions. O1 is an, off, is an amplifier that does not need to pr process signal frequencies. And X, uh, the, 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 uh, the, first, the other one, X1 here, is a uh, amplifier that needs to pass frequencies of uh, interest. So this is a completely, uh, we have different requirements for both operational amplifiers. One can be selected for uh, DC performance, while the other can be selected for its low noise or uh, gain bandwidth product, as we will see later. 